Today we're talking about wet beds and metallic blends, what causes modeling and tiger striping, and I'll give you two simple tricks to correct it. A wet bed is gonna help you get a better orientation in your metallic finish. It's gonna fill any minor scratches from sanding, so when you apply your base coat, those metallics will lay flat on the surface, soak into that wet bed, and give you a nice uniform orientation in your metallic finish. So it's gonna give you better results in your blends, and better results in your overall paint job. Now typically I use a clear base coat for my wet bed, which is basically binder and reducer. You mix it up just like paint, two parts binder, one part reducer, depending on how you mix your paint or what paint you're using. But it's a clear base coat, so it has no color in the binder. So then when you lay it on, you have a, have a nice wet surface for your metallics to lay in. Makes sense, right? You're gonna get less modeling and it's gonna make it easier for you to lay down your base coat and get a good transition in your blend. Now the product we're gonna use today is this Speed Coat Color Blender. I have never tried this out. We're gonna try it out today and test it out, but this is pre-mixed. So basically all you have to do is spray it on before you apply your base coat. But we need to prep out the surface for paint. So let's get on that now. So this is the vehicle we're working on today. This is a Kia Optima that we straightened a dent in this door. Had a good sized dent in this door. We repaired that, we primed it, we've got it ready for paint. Now we have a couple little areas that we've broken through the paint. We're gonna seal this before we paint it. First thing I wanna do is I wanna clean this with some isopropyl alcohol, remove any dust or contaminants that might've landed on this overnight. We'll tack it off, we'll mix up our sealer, and then we'll go ahead and apply our wet bed and I'll show you how to use it. 70% isopropyl alcohol. I'm gonna use a clean microfiber towel. One tip I have for you is always clean your blend areas first and then clean your primer. If you wipe down your primer first and there's any primer residue on that, you don't wanna transfer that over onto your blend area. So let's go ahead and wipe this down. Now we wanna let this flash off for about 15 minutes and then we'll start applying our clear base coat or our color blender by Speed Coat. Now I am gonna apply some of this U-Pole number nine. This is to soften the edge of the sealer. Okay, now we're gonna pour in some color blender. And like I said, this is pre-mixed. Okay, so for the wet bed, we're gonna apply it over both, all three panels. Um, you don't have to. Now you could just do the primer and then the blend area if you would like. I prefer to do the whole panel, just to make it all uniform. There's no trick to applying it. You can use the same air pressure that you're using on your base coat. Now for this particular gun, I'm gonna do two and a half turns out on the fluid volume. The air pressure is gonna be about 15 PSI and our fan pattern will be close to wide open. Okay, so now we wanna let this flash off for 15 minutes before we apply our base coat. The directions on this particular blender, the color blender by Speed Coat, says allow 15 minutes before you apply your base. Now, typically when I'm using binder reduced, I can do it almost immediately. But this says 15 minutes, so that's what we're gonna do. Now we're gonna apply our base. We can see how this is dulled to a kind of like a matte finish. We're just gonna cover the primer area first and then we'll blend out into the panels. We've got one coat of base on this. We're gonna let this flash off for 
10 to 15 minutes and we'll apply another coat of base. So I had, went ahead and put one more coat of base on. I guess I didn't turn the camera on. Um, nice uniform finish, nice and smooth. We need to apply the clear coat. We'll put two coats of clear on it. We'll put one on, let it flash for 15 minutes, put a second coat on. Stay tuned, because when I finish clearing, I'm gonna give you the two main causes for tiger stripes and modeling in your metallic blends. I'll also give you two simple tips that are gonna help you eliminate those problems forever. Here's a few quick techniques for spraying clear coat. And if you wanna learn more about how to spray clear coat, check out a video at the end. But what you wanna do is you wanna always have a consistent speed, whether you're painting fast or slow, keep it consistent. Don't spray scared, don't spray super slow, just a nice medium speed to start out with. Now you always wanna be about six inches away from the panel when you're spraying. Now different painters uh, are closer and some are a little farther away, six to eight inches. Um, it all depends on how you like to spray, but just be consistent with it, whatever it is. You wanna overlap 80%. Overlapping your passes is important to get full coverage and to allow that clear coat to flow out properly. Of course, having your gun set up properly for the way you like to spray is gonna make all the difference. Now, this particular gun is a new gun to me. I have my fan pattern and my fluid setting to wide open, and I have my air pressure set at about 28 PSI. The best thing you can do is practice and experiment until you get comfortable laying down a nice slick coat of clear. Couple tips if you're struggling with modeling or tiger striping in your base coat. Always use the proper reducer for the temperature you're spraying in. And I would err on the side of a slower reducer. A slower reducer is gonna help those metallics lay out flatter, give you a better metallic orientation in your blend. If you use a reducer that is too fast, it's the metallics are gonna start to dry as they hit the panel. That's gonna give you that modeling or tiger striping. Now typically tiger striping comes from the gun, but it also can happen when you have too much air pressure. So make sure you're on the lower side of your air pressure when you're spraying your base coat. Uh, if you're atomizing your paint too much, that's gonna cause the modeling effect, okay? That's another area that you can easily correct when you're spraying your blends in base coat. Now, the color blender, I like the color blender. It did its job, it worked really well. I did want a couple things to note when using this. You could thin this out just a little bit if you think it's coming out too thick. It is a pretty thick product. So a little bit of reduction uh, with some reducer, like five or 10%, I think would help it flow out and be a little bit smoother before you apply your base. You wanna apply one coat of this and you want it to be a light to medium coat. And if you wanted to do a drop coat, you could also add this to a little bit of your paint to thin it out a little bit with a little bit of reducer, and it would work nicely for a drop coat. I appreciate each and every one of you watching and supporting the channel. If you wanna learn more about paint and body repair, check out one of these videos now. We'll see you next time on Garage Noise.